practice done. We, we'd want you to be in practice, so hope you didn't rush over it. No, all. it worked out really good. I'm excited to be here. I, I miss these times, and so it's crazy that it's already back. Very good. Game week, uh, does it seem like it's been a long time to get to this point, and how excited are you to get things started? Excited. You know, talked to the team today about um, not missing this opportunity to um, – to step into who they are. I think it's so much of it is that. I think, you know, we started in January of like the wrong first question is like, what do we do next? The right first question is like, who do we become? And I think the whole thing is a becoming. And, you know, you look at like winner and um, trying, you know, trying to find leaders, um, you know, the young people getting used to being on time for stuff and class checks and all that. And then in spring, um, you know, them having the opportunity to kind of show out some and and find roles on offense and defense, special teams. And then summer, kind of back to the grind. And and Vic's uh, Valori, our string coaches, got them and and putting on weight or taking off weight. And then fall camp, I thought was great. I thought you know, there was energy every day. You know, the, we when we started fall camp, it was 105 <laughs> about every day. And so we were inside, I think, the first three days, um, the majority, maybe 60% of the time, and outside 40%. But after those three days, we were outside really the whole time. And so there was no, you know, complaining or, you know, we were able to get, keep guys. They hydrated themselves prior to it, so they were smart about it. And um, I thought, you know, it's really good showing. And so leading up to this, you know, and so that, you know, the – the two big concerns going into this game is going to be how we handle, um, you know, with our young people, how we handle failure, right? What the most important play is the play after the mistake you make, because it's not an if, it's a win. And then, you know, for our, our veterans, like, you know, some of them with some pretty cool accolades, um, you know, behind their name is like, don't make every play. You don't have to make every play, mm -hmm. you know, do your job, make, have the, let the plays come to you. And so, We'll see. I think a lot of that is a day-by-day -day thing where it's like, hey, man, just you as you are, that's enough. And so uh, we've been we've been talking that way. One of the questions you got at the uh, press conference on Monday, I think from Bryce Cherry of the Waco Tribune-Herald, uh, he said, besides a win, what else do you want to get out of this game? Yeah, so it goes back to that becoming. I think identity is really strong. And, you know, every – after every Saturday game on a Sunday, you got a brand new team. And so, you know, for us to, I feel like for me personally, there's been like so many words. <laughs> It'd be great to not have as many words and just have a little more, you know, action on the field. And so I think, you know, having that action on the field will allow, um, you know, them to kind of sign their name, for us to sign our name. And I think, you know, we're, we really are looking forward to that. And the you, know, you look at last year um, and how you know we started off kind of rough and got better as the season went on, and the identity I think was pretty strong, and we'd like to have a really strong identity here and hopefully start a little bit faster. You know, so I think that's a big one. Competitive maturity would be the second one, and that's when things are their hardest and most competitive that we are our best authentic self. And you know, we showed an example today of. Uh, you know, we had a play in practice where um, we had a defender that was going to thud up a ball carrier, and um, he got kind of knocked back more than what he he, th he maybe thought he should have. And the very next play, he was mad about that. Mm -hmm. And the very next play took somewhat of a um, questionable shot on another offender. And so, like, that in a game would be a foul. And so, like, we made a huge deal about that because those are – you know, the game is made up of a bunch of little episodes of that where, you know, we can either be better or worse. And, you know, you're affecting your team when this happens. And, you know, I think everyone feels that stuff. But we just have to be able to kind of have a pause and control it better. And so I think, like, um, you know, that second part of competitive maturity is really strong. And then energy is number three. And so, like, start the game, I know there's going to be some butterflies and all of it. And then at the end of the game, Right, finishing stronger than what we started is, is way key. And so we talk those three things every day. Well, every every year is new. It's a new team. It's a new chapter. Uh, how about the leaders on this team? You had such great leaders last year. How do you feel about the leadership here? I think it's emerging. I think we've got guys that uh, are, first of all, just great, great people. But I think, you know, getting it to the point to where I think so much of it is just feeling comfortable in themselves. I think one of the 
mistakes I've made in the past as I've talked about leadership. Because it was kind of the same with me, too. When I, I took this role and everyone's talking about leadership and I'm kind of like looking over the corner. <laughs> like, who are, they, did they do, who are they talking about? And, and then when you don't know enough, you try to build and try to do too much, you know? Or you're, you look at what the guy did before or you look at like what this book in Barnes & Noble says about leadership and all of it. And so I think it's, more, it's not so much an outside thing as an inside thing of knowing really who you are and kind of what's important to you and how you want this thing to look and that, hey, this, you're, you do have your signature on this thing, man, right? And so all of that kind of takes time because people have to feel safe in order for all that to kind of settle because a lot of us are used to just kind of saying what we need to say in the spots that we think we need to say stuff, you know? So I think that's happening, I feel, you know? The real test of that's going to be the games when, you know, for – you know, a coach's mask could come off, right, trying to be this certain guy, and now all of a sudden something didn't go right and all this other thing, and that thing right there could kill an emerging leader, you know, who's trying to trying to get, you know, his confidence, um, um, you know, his, or to act on, on confidence with what he sees and what he, you know. So much of leadership, I feel, is like, hey, I just saw something. Should I say something or should I act like I didn't see it? I do that sometimes with my teenage kids. <laughs> so I just saw something. I, I need to probably say something. And so I think like that's, you want guys to feel confident enough to do that. Wow. Uh, do, do you feel like you got what you wanted out of fall camp? I mean, are you, are you where you'd like to be right now three days before you kick it off? Yeah, you know, I think the O-line, D-lines are, sh are strong uh, units for us, I think. D-line wise, three deep can play, uh, and then O-line wise, you know, strong, really strong, two deep can play, and there's going to be threes they're going to play as well, you know, and but um, you know, hopefully at the end of games. Uh, but I think those units really kind of drive um, drive the team. I think the development of our receivers is really impressive. And I give a lot of credit to Dallas Baker. I think he's done a great job of connecting and making, um, you know, getting kids to where they can believe in them. And they're really playing hard for him, you know. And I think right now I'm having one-on-one, -on -one, so I'm finishing up the team. And so it's I'm, I've I've gone we've gone through about 80 guys. And so I think like the all of the receivers, all of them, all speak the praises of Dallas and how he listens and how he, you know. Because so, so many guys where there's a mistake that's made, they just want to be understood, you know. And much like I think as a parent, you would understand if your son or your daughter made this mistake. Hey, we've been working on this thing at home all day. And now go out with your coach and get this done. And you're seeing it and here's the time where it's going to happen and it doesn't happen, yeah. right? But then you know kind of all the stuff as a parent that went into it. And so many times the coach is coming from the other side just kind of killing it, you know and crushing whatever hopes and dreams are there. And so I think for a coach to have the, to know your people and to know kind of what they're working on, where they're at in their journey, because everyone's going to be in a different spot, I think that's way big. He does a great job of that. So I think receivers are trending up. I think linebackers are really impressive. I think Matt Jones having him back has been way cool. Garmin Randolph is kind of a veteran now, uh, which is really pretty neat. He's going to be a guy that's going to, I think, just – emerge and emerge and emerge. Our secondary is a lot of youth, but um, very, very talented. We've got we've got guys, Devin Bobby, Devin Lemire, there's a few Devins, Devin Neals, all these guys can really close ground and make plays uh, when the ball's in the air and they, and they're really good blitzers too. So, yeah, I mean, you know, all of that to say, it's one thing when there's not pressure, right? And pressure creates abnormal behavior. So now going into a game when there's pressure, you kind of have to go down before you go up with all of it. And so, um, yeah, I think it's all part of the process. I'm, I'm excited to go through it with them. Yeah. All right. Uh, we've got a lot of questions from the audience. Our guest season opener for the Bears, 6 p.m. Central Time this Saturday from McLean Stadium. Coach, a new partner with Baylor with the Big 12 Conference is Old Trapper. Got some samples there. Take some of those back to the office with you. You like beef jerky? Uh, no. No. <laughs> we like Old Trapper, though. We like Old Trapper. 
We love Old Trapper, and uh, their their segment is Where's the Beef? Where's your beef uh, this year for you guys? Part of that is your your schedule. Man, it's a tough schedule for your team this year. Yeah, we've we've talked about trying to frame that as running into the storm. I think the very first uh, the, yeah the very first day report day, we showed a video. It was somewhere in Texas where um, there 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 was a rancher and he was talking about all types of animals when storms come. Cows, for example, will run away from the storm to get try to get away from it when a storm comes in lightning and thunder and all that and um, as they run away from it they're really kind of staying in in line with the storm right they're, they're with they're in harm's way longer and so they're saying that buffalo is really the only animal that runs into the storm and you know you use that to just talk about hey there's a there's something hard that i've been avoiding there's there's a question that i need to ask that i haven't you know there's a difficult conversation i need to have that i've been you know trying to work around or you know, there's something difficult that I have to do that I don't want to do. And so it's just to run into it and kind of embrace it, you know. And so seeing that when we, you know, when we do get in practice and there are those tough times and all that, as, as it naturally comes, you can hear guys say all that in the back. And so I think, you know, they've kind of taken to it. I like that. That's great. All right. Uh, our first place foods, Ask the Coach. We've got a, a handful of questions from you, the audience here at Rudy's. Uh, it's brought to you by First Place Foods. That's a darn good pickle. Tommy says, uh, which player has improved the most from last season? That's a good question. Um, let's see. So Kyron Drones comes to mind immediately. I think his improvement, he's, um, he's one of our quarterbacks. And, you know, his confidence and just the way he moves, there's an energy about him that's really good to see. Seth Jones comes to mind. I think Seth, just maturity and kind of just uh, character growth and just so cool to see, right? The, his his growth is like the coolest thing for me, just seeing that and so wanting him to have success on the field because of everything off the field that he's been able to do. I feel like he way deserves it. And then trying to think, um, you know, defensively, I would say Tyron Brown is a linebacker for us that – same thing has kind of made the move um, where he's where he is um, really matured. You know he's doing better in school. Um, let me try to think. That my, uh, Mike Harris is a de defensive back, and Mike's had some hard learning uh, on and off the field, and Mike's really doing well right now. So it's there's been a lot you know of some some valleys and stuff. With some of these guys, this question, there's a bunch of dudes that are heading up mountains. So it's pretty cool. Wow, that's great. All right, uh, Noni Orozco, where's Noni in the room? Oh yeah, right there. Okay, says since Sugar Bowl, uh, where have you seen the most growth in this team on the field and off the field? Yeah, so I, that's a that's a good question. I think there is, I feel there is a vulnerability with the guys that they're more open and willing to go there and maybe talk about their feelings, kind of talk about like what's real. And I appreciate that. And so I think whereas before, you know, there'd be times where I would be up there and, and um, the looks that I would see when I was, I'd be talking would be um, pretty strong. And so now it's more of a head nod and it's more of, I'm hearing his son in the one-on-one -on -one so that, Hey coach, I had this question, I had this. And so they're, I think the trust has been built throughout and continuing to build where guys can really kind of, you know, say what they need to say. And I appreciate that. I think that will only make us stronger. Cool. Very good. All right, Ben Hagens is right there. Ben says, two-part question, of course, coming from Ben. Two-part question, uh, read in the trib yesterday, talk about uh, expand on your meaning of identity. I think mm -hmm. you talked about that. And also, how do you focus on Saturday and not look past this game to the BYU game? Yeah, appreciate the question. So identity would be, you know, I think this, I look at it two, two ways in that. I think one is, right, the identity that I would like for us to have is to do the, the simple things that ain't easy. And so 11 guys are on the field, right, um, at any time, um, at any given time. We're running full speed. We're communicating. Right, offense is getting the play in soon, so there's, you know, we're not we're not late coming off the sideline. If there's a defensive substitution, we're hand signaling, we're on and off, we're clean. You know, I look at the first game last year we had, and we had time of possession, we had y rushing yards, passing yards, we had all of it, 
what we did not have was penalties. The competitive maturity thing was just very, very poor. And that game was really down to the last possession that they had. You know, we were, we had a chance to close out that last game. And then in, you know, the we jumped off sides, which cut down like a third and short to a third and long and didn't get it and had to punt. And so, you know, to do the, the simple things that aren't easy, I think, would be something I would like to see identity-wise. And the rest of it is, you know, we talk about some of the veterans and some of the guys that we have to just go from like an amateur to an actor to an artist. And so that amateur is like on, um, you know, just doesn't click for him right now on all these lists, right? And maybe blaming and all the other thing. And we got to continue to wrap our arm around him and kind of lead him to where he needs to go. The actor is somebody that, you know, maybe when when the sun is shining and everything is kind of going with it, but when the storms hit, right, the mask comes off and this, who is this other, who is this guy, right? Who is this new guy that I didn't know? And so I think that's just a process though, because, you know, the belief is, it's never like that. It's always kind of steps and all that. Then the, the top thing would be the artist. And that's someone that, that can express themselves with the sport, right? How they treat people, how they handle negative things, how they handle positive things in terms of, you know, their outpouring um, and expression of just, you know, empathy. And so I think, you know, that part of identity is going to come from our from those artists on our team and you like to get to have them feel free to be art artistic and so you know you look at petrie you look at um, you know we had a few of them last year so good no no concerns at all about looking past u albany to byu you know with that with that piece we talk about respect all fear none you know and so it's just all about us and so that has been a talk from the very beginning and um uh, you know, it's it's one thing to say it, though. It's another thing to do it. And so, you know, it's it has to be our standards over what TV channel the game is on. It's got to be our standards versus what their record is, our standards versus what their ranking is, what our standards enemies. versus what their logo is. And it's just, you know, on, you know it's yeah. our standards <laughs> versus basically anything that's on their phone. <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, that's a, that's a full-time job. All right, very good. Kathy Hagens has a question. You made this reference to jazz music the other day also. Do you like jazz music? I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What is it, and, and how do you, you incorporated it so seamlessly <laughs> into your point of jazz mu music is simple. Oh, yeah. Well, I like the, you know, the artistic part of it. I like the, the improv that goes there, and, um, you know, I think, I think it's, a, it's, it's an acquired, um, it's an acquired taste probably, but I think once you kind of got it, it's really, it's way cool. You know, our recruiting weekends, we listen to, um, so they, on Sundays they come to the house and we have like a brunch outside and this is in the summertime. So there's, you know, there's fans and stuff, but it's still hot. And we've got you know, New Orleans jazz playing outside in the, our backyard and all that. It reminds me of some of the spots that we would go for brunch down in New Orleans. And it's just way cool. I think the, a lot of the, the folks that come, um, when they visit Baylor and looking at football, they speak of just that experience. It's pretty neat, but we have jazz on quite a bit. Very cool. That's great. All right, Scott Van Cali, right back there, has a question. How do you prepare players for rainy games? You've had some rainy practices this mm -hmm. week. Yeah, so you got to have wet ball drills. Uh, you have to be able to practice out in the rain, right, for footing. And, uh, you know, and so it's a different, you know, there's different cleats that you can have, so you got to go through all that. I think, you know, lineman-wise, I think it probably favors the offense more than the, you know, there's a little bit more reaction with defense and a little bit more, um, you know, t space to close for defensive players where I thought it was this and then I, but it's really that and it's too late because you're on skates. And so, you know, you have to try to drill all that as best you can. Good. All right, Mason right here. Mason has a question for you, Coach. And uh, you, you talked about this earlier. Uh, he says, will Al Walcott replace Jalen Petrie as a defensive leader? You know, um, Jalen, I think, is one of those guys that's probably irreplaceable just in terms of the whole thing, you know, in terms of just his energy and just, um, you know, I think you know, Jalen is almost like a symbol of, of – um, you know, never given up, never given in, right? Always, 
always treating people right, being being a warrior for Christ, all of it. And so I think, you know, yeah, I think Jalen will always be that. Now, Al, from when Al was one of the re recruits when we first got here in December, and, or in January, rather, that, um, so he's been with us this three years. His growth has been way strong. He's one of them also. Mm -hmm. He's been in some valleys. He's climbing up a mountain now. But he does have, similar to Jalen, the knack for making plays. And so if he's for 30 plays, he's got two PBUs. He has a sack. He has a, maybe a forced fumble. I mean, his numbers are like that. So he's when he's in the game, he's around making plays. And so I think that if we can get some of that, Right, and then get the continued growth, um, just kind of inside and out with him. You know, he'll be on his way. Cool. Good question, Mason. Thank you very much. Final question from Roy Evans right here. Roy says, if the Velveteen Rabbit ran a defense, <coughs> what would it look like? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I think, you know, what's cool about that story is it's just, it's kind of what we talked about in the beginning. It's like, you know, the right first question is who do you become? And I think, you know, I think all of that, just, there's, there's, a, there's a slide we showed today of um, there's an arrow going straight up like this. And um, I think on the side, it goes like right here, everything is so awesome. And it was like an arrow going up like this. And then the next thing, the next slide was on the top, it said, but this is all a part of it. And it showed a graph of an arrow up now like this, arrow like this, arrow like this, arrow like this, arrow, you know, like that. Which is kind of what it, what, which is kind of imperfect reality, which is life, you know? And then the next slide was an arrow going way down like this. And the thing was like, this sucks, you know? Or this is horrible. And then it, the next slide after that was all of this again, right? The same as all a part of it. And so, you know, all the praise, the criticism, you know, all of the wins, the losses, Right, all of the kind of the trust and the betrayals and just all the stuff that's going to go on this season is all part of it. You know, so you got to say yes to all of it, and then in the process, I right, become the person um, that you're meant to be. And I think you know that's what's so cool about that story. And uh, you kind of have to keep bringing that up front because you know people will just will get caught by the wins and the losses, and we'll get caught with all the drama. But the real stuff is better than all that. You know. Very good. Yeah.